चलो नाउ लेट्स गो एंड मूव टू द नेक्स्ट चैप्टर द नेक्स्ट चैप्टर इज नेचर ऑफ सप्लाई एवरी वन लिसन टू बी वेरी केयरफुली हियर इट इज सेक्शन नंबर सेवन ऑफ द सीजीएसटी एक्ट हियर इफ यू गो एड एंड टॉक इंटरस्टेट इज सेक्शन नंबर सेवन ऑफ द आईजीएसटी एक्ट Here it is eight of the CGST Act. Here it is eight of the IGST Act. Everyone over here now. Nature of supply. Nature of supply. Before I go ahead and understand, I want to go ahead and tell you section number two, clause fifty six, which goes ahead and talks about India. Sir, what do you mean by India? India means the territory of India. Sir, this is the territory of India. All the states and union territories which are there. This is basically India. Okay, it's territorial water. From here up to 12 nautical mile, basically from the baseline, when you go up to 12 nautical mile, that is also India. So India means territory of India. You have to think me as India. India means the territory of India. Up to 12 nautical mile is also India. Okay, sir. Then its territorial water means from here up to 12 nautical mile is also India. Okay. Below this, you have the sea bed and subsoil. That is also India. Sea bed and subsoil under such water means under the territorial water, whatever sea bed and subsoil is there, that is also India. Okay, continental shelf. This is known as the continental shelf. Basically, after 12 nautical mile up to 200 nautical mile means from the baseline up to 200 nautical mile means this area which is 188 nautical mile. Sir, what is nautical mile? To measure in the sea, we don't say kilometers. We say nautical mile. One nautical mile. Uh, is approximately 1.853 kilometers. ठीक है done sir. So from here up to 12 nautical mile, from here to here, the land which is there below, it is known as continental shelf. And above this, the sea which is there is exclusive economic zone. Done sir. Exclusive economic zone is also India. And then they have gone ahead and told the air space above the territory and the territorial water is also. India. Always remember, above the territorial water and the territory of India, the air space which is there is also India. Not above this. Above this, the air space which is there is not India. Done, sir. Point is clear. India means the territory of India, territorial water. Then under the territorial water, whatever seabed and subsoil. After that, exclusive economic zone. Below that, the continental shelf. Air space above the territory and territorial water is also India. Done, sir. Now, please come to. Please come to nature of supply. I have gone ahead and told you supply can be intrastate or interstate. Interstate supply is told in section number seven. Intrastate supply is told in section number eight. Sir, what do you mean by intrastate supply? Intrastate means whenever supply, where location of supplier and place of supplier within the same state, within the same union territory, it is always known as intrastate supply. Interstate, different state, different UT, one state, one UT. Then it is always interstate supply. Let's read this in the definition now. Section number, not definition. Let's read in section number seven and eight of the IGST Act. Intrastate supply, subject to provision of sec sub, uh, section number ten. Section number, subject to provision of section number ten and subject to provision of section number twelve. Basically, place of supply ka chapter. Okay, sir. You will read, not read this now. ठीक है? You don't cut anything, Baba, in the chart. Supply of goods where well, location of supplier and place of supply in the same state or same union territory, it is always what intrastate supply. Supply of service ka case mein location of supplier and place of supply in the same state or UT, it is always intrastate supply. Sir, what is intrastate? Interstate. This we'll be reading anyways in the chapter of place of supply. We'll not read now. ठीक है? Section number seven one and seven three. Supply of goods and supply of service. Where location of supplier of and place of supplier in two different state, two different UT, one state and one UT, then it is always interstate supply. Import of goods till they cross the custom frontier, till they cross the custom boundaries means from outside India when goods are coming into India. Importation of goods is always interstate supply. Importation of service is also interstate supply. Section number seven five goes ahead and says supply of goods or supply of service or both. When location of supply is in India, place of supply is outside India. Location of supply is in India, place of supply is outside India. It is always interstate supply. Supply to or supply by an SCZ unit or developer. Whenever you are supplying to an SCZ unit or SCZ unit is supplying to you, it is always interstate supply. Any transaction which is happening in the taxable territory, it is not intrastate supply. 
it will and it is not covered anywhere else it is always interstate supply means anything which is not intra will always be inter see over here everyone proviso following shall not be intra supply of goods to or by scz unit or developer sir it will never be intra it is always interstate it is told supply of service see this is goods it is service supply of service to or by scz unit shall not be intra it is never intra and hence i have always told you it is always interstate importation of goods till they cross the custom frontier sir it is always it is it is never intra it will always be interstate supplies made to a tourist supply of goods they are talking about service ka case mein though because service is consumed in india it can be intra but if goods are being supplied to a tourist because he is taking going to take the goods from india outside india always it will be interstate supply anything which is not anything which is not covered anywhere else and which is not intra it will always be interstate supply and hence supplies which are made to a tourist will always be interstate supply done sir point is clear then explanation number one it says one establishment in india one establishment outside india i have one establishment in india one head office outside india always distinct person one establishment in a state or ut another establishment in a state another establishment in other outside the state or ut shall also be distinct person i have one establishment one head office in uh, karnataka one branch office in tamil nadu both are in different state baba different state then it will always be distinct person one establishment in a state another establishment also in that state and both are registered within the state then it will become distinct person so i have two establishment in the same state both are registered then they become both become different different person in the eye of gst person carrying on business through a branch or agency or a representational office in any territory will be treated as having an establishment in that, that territory so for an example i have a representative office in dubai then baba it will be treated as dubai may i have one more distinct means i have one more establishment over there and that will become a distinct person done sir point is clear then the next one over here tell me one thing for an example i am going ahead and supplying in the territorial water i am one person and i am in the state of delhi and i am going ahead and supplying in the territorial water sir what will be the location if i am going ahead and supplying if the place of supply is in the territorial water what will be the place of supply they are telling when you are going ahead and supplying in the territorial water these people ke liye the place of supply will be the nearest coastal state so for an example sir there is a supplier who is going ahead and supplying from here then for an example one supplier from the territorial water is supplying to another person in india then sir then they are going ahead and telling sir if the supplier is in the territorial water supplier will be deemed to be in the nearest coastal state that is what is being told over here sir supply in the territorial water so if i am going ahead and supplying in the territorial water baba those people have to take registration in the nearest coastal state so it will be as if i have gone ahead and supplied in that coastal state so for an example the supply is in the territorial water that supplier ka location will be deemed to be in the nearest coastal state done sir point is clear it says location of supply is in the territorial water location deemed to be in the nearest coastal state place of supply is in the territorial water place of supply deemed to be in the nearest coastal state done sir sir if i am going ahead and supplying in the eez supposingly i am going ahead and supplying the exclusive economic zone always remember exclusive economic zone is an other territory which is a union territory it's a union territory it is an another territory only it's a territory of the union government and whenever you are going ahead and supplying from india means that is also india only supposing you are supplying from delhi to another territory which is a union territory baba it is always interstate supply and always igst shall be charged done sir point is clear the same thing is told exclusive economic zone treated as other territory which is a union territory from delhi supposingly you supplied in the union territory which is the other territory the name of the exclusive economic zone is only other territory it shall always be interstate supply and always igst shall be charged tell me one thing what if within the ez supposing there is another oil rig which is being where supply is being done within the ez then then sir it shall always be intrastate supply because full ez is another territory and other territory means it's a union territory within the union territory cgst and utgst and outside the union territory it is always 
IGST. Done, sir. Point is clear. Let's go ahead. Now, the next one over here is zero rated supply. Sir, what do you mean by zero rated supply? Zero rated supply, they have gone ahead and told that, sir, your supply will be zero rated supply if you are going ahead and doing export, export of goods or service or both, it will be termed as zero rated. Sir, what is the benefit of zero rated? The benefit of zero rated is whenever you are going ahead and your transaction is falling under section number 16, which is zero rate, then outward pay, you don't have to pay any tax. You can give an LUT or bond. Input tax credit, which is there, refund will be given. It means the whole chain of your buying to exporting will become zero rated, means zero tax car burden will be there. Sir, if I don't want to give an LUT or bond, then they have gone ahead and told, pay the IGST on export and whatever IGST is there, you can claim a refund. Section number 16, zero rated supply. Exports are always zero rated and supplying to an SCZ unit is always zero rated. Baba, supplying by an SCZ is not zero rated. Supplying to an SCZ unit is only zero rated supply. So always remember, exports are zero rated and always supplying to, to, to SCZ unit is zero rated supply. Sir, if I am going ahead and making, supposingly, everyone always remember one thing. If in India, supposingly you are a shopkeeper, you bought some plastic. Out of the plastic, you made plastic bangles and you are going ahead and selling in India. In India, plastic bangles are exempt supply. When it is exempt supply, ITC is never given to you. Remember this. But for an example, you went ahead and bought plastic. Out of the plastic, you made plastic bangles. You made what? Plastic bangles. And these plastic bangles you exported. Always remember, always remember if you are going ahead and exporting this. If you are going ahead and exporting, then sir, it will get the benefit of zero rated supply. Whatever ITC is there, even though plastic bangles are exempt supply in India, this ITC still you will be able to claim a refund. They have gone ahead and told over here, see. Uh, subject to section number 17.5 means block credit card ITC will not get, but... ITC will be available for making zero rated supply, even if sub supply is an exempt supply. Means you are going ahead and doing an ex exempt supply in India, ITC is not available. But if exempt supply is being exported, then always remember ITC which is there will be available to you and you will be able to claim a refund also of it. Done sir, point is clear. Next. Se uh, section number 16, 3 goes ahead and says whenever you are going ahead and making zero rated supply, what is zero rated everyone? Exports. And supply to an SCZ or unit or developer is always zero rated. Whenever you want to make your supply as zero rated, the government went ahead and told basically in your whole chain there will be no tax cut burden. I told sir, how will we do it? So if you are going ahead and exporting, do one thing: give a LUT or bond. Whenever you give a letter of undertaking or bond, ITC ka refund will be given to you. So basically, you are buying to selling the complete chain pe no tax cut burden. Or government went ahead and told Ramesh, you buy, you will have ITC. When you sell, don't give value to your bond, no headache, pay the IGST. This ITC, you use it to pay the IGST and whole IGST which you have paid by using your ITC and cash, the total amount of IGST car refund you can go ahead and claim. So basically, to make it zero rated, government went ahead and told two methods. Number one, supply under bond without IGST ka payment, whatever ITC is there, you can claim a refund. Secondly, whenever you are exporting, pay the IGST. How will you pay the IGST? Either use your ITC or pay in cash also. Whatever is the total amount of IGST paid will be given as a refund. Yes, sir. We got the point. Everyone listen to me very carefully. Here there is a small circular which is there. The small circular talks about short term accommodation, banqueting, conferencing ka services which are provided to an SCZ unit. Always remember one thing. Whenever you are going ahead and supplying the uh, banqueting etc ka service if supply is in the supplier supposingly this is the state of Karnataka this is an SCZ unit SCZ unit went to one hotel and they went ahead and took one banquet okay now whenever this supplier is located location of supplier is Karnataka place of supply is where the immovable property is located sir place of supply is also Karnataka so it becomes intrastate supply as per section number 12 as per section number 12 of the IGST Act relating to place of supply, it becomes intrastate supply. But, sir, it is also told that whenever you are going ahead and giving services to an SEZ, it is intrastate supply. 
what to do now so government went in and clarified simply that sir section number 123c is a general provision but with respect to scz special provision is there which goes ahead and says it's an interstate supply and hence it will be an interstate supply also the supplier can go ahead and claim the benefit of zero rated supply done sir point is clear here i have just gone ahead and given the definition of export of goods export of goods means taking from india outside india taking of goods from india outside india is export of goods export of service sir very very important export of service means supplier is in india recipient is outside india place of supply is outside india you are going ahead and receiving foreign convertible currency in case of nepal and bhutan inr is also okay and sir you both are not mere establishment of distinct person means you should not be head office and branch office in that scenario it will not be export of service again with me everyone supplier is in india recipient is outside india place of supply is outside india what you are receiving is foreign convertible currency and you both are not mere establishment of distinct person in that scenario it will become an export of service very very important definition for your exam sir what kind of a chapter it is baba it's a chapter which is to be learned in linking they might not go ahead and directly ask a question out of this but this is a chapter which has to be learned in linking done sir point is clear we will go ahead i don't think so many question answers are there in your q and a material baba if you don't have the q and a material you can go ahead and purchase the q and a material which is there trust me after every class if you are going ahead and solving the q and a only then the class will be beneficial if you have the q and a material my q and a material any other teacher ka q and a material please solve it by writing with your own hand writing and solving only will lead to good score in the exam done sir point is clear so i went ahead and taught you the next chapter also which is nature of supply everyone with me i started teaching you with goods or services goods section number 252 services se section number 2102 goods and service has to be supplied supply section number 7 section number 7 we went ahead and learned section number 71a b and c schedule 1 c was schedule 1 section number 71 capital a which told about schedule 2 we will have to see schedule 2 to see whether a transaction is supply of goods or supply of service and then we had section number 72 a bench flag b told about government ka services which are notified neither supply of goods nor supply of service then we had section number 8 composite supply mix supply composite supply principal supply ka rate mix supply highest rate sir goods and service has to be supplied supply can be either interstate or intrastate everyone listen interstate supply section number 7 of the igst act intrastate supply section number 8 of the igst act section number 9 whenever you are supplying in the territorial water place of supply is in the territorial water place of supply nearest coastal state whenever supplier is in the territorial water supplier ka location nearest coastal state then section number 10 everyone 10 11 12 and 13 of the igst act talks about place of supply okay sir in the place of supply chapter we'll go ahead and do it then section number 14 talks about oidar ka special provision online information database access and retrieval service provider ka special provision section number 15 talks about tourist and section number 16 section number 16 goes ahead and talks about zero rated supply everyone exports are zero rated supplying to an scz unit or developer is zero rated how will you claim zero rated ka benefit Given LUT, take IDC का refund. Don't give an LUT. Pay the IGST claim. IGST का refund. Yes, sir. We are all clear till here. Today's revision, I'll go ahead and stop till here. I'll be going ahead and stop. Uh, I'll stop the revision till here. I have gone ahead and covered all the section. Chapter number one, I've told you is a C graded chapter. Chapter number two, I've told you is an A graded chapter. This chapter is a C graded chapter but it is very important for interlinking you need to know this chapter done sir point is clear in this chapter this definition must be remembered by you done sir we will remember zero rated supply should be remembered you have to remember this i have also gone ahead and told you what are the important points to be done in this chapter i want each one of you to solve question answer whichever question answer book you have you have my question answer you have any other teacher ka question answer you don't have a question answer book take the ici ka q and a material take the rtps mtp start solving it please write with your own hand practice this three chapter tomorrow morning when i go ahead and start the class i'll be starting with a 
new chapter which is basically so tomorrow we'll be going ahead and starting with charge of gst charge of gst ka chapter will be starting in the next class take care everyone bye guys love you all